Welcome in. First episode of the Olithio Network's Chicago History Show. I got myself, Tassos Kirkos, and uh, Victor Simononic, Sully, and Jack Macklin from Betting the House. Or from Let's Cool One. Jeez, rough start. Um, yeah, no, we, we needed another show. Um, we, we needed another show. So uh, we we decided that this was a cool topic. Jack actually came up with it. So so props to you, Jack. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we just thought it was a fun vessel for us to kind of get our other people involved and mix it up a little bit. We have just a lot of different fun topics. Today's is going to be the founding of Chicago. Um, but we, there's so many fun topics that are like sports related and music related and um, societal, like society related and business and um, po politics. There's, there's and lots stuff. of uh, major Chicago historical events to cover. You know, Chicago is a huge, great city with a deep, vast history. You know, anything from the fire to the transit, uh, current state of the transit place or. Um, you know, just even long-standing establishments and businesses that have been in Chicago for a long time, but uh, yeah. But yeah, we, we needed another show, so so we're all here. Um, me and Sally are going to be doing this regularly. Jack is dropping in today, uh, so thank you to you, Jack, also again. Oh um, yeah, absolutely. Glad to but, be here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Sully and I will be holding down the fort. We think this show is going to be more fun. Uh, the more, the more people we have and the more, uh, you know, we're able to mix it up. So like three, four or five people uh, on a show would be really fun, uh, and, and would be, but we got to start somewhere. So, uh, we're here. Discover Chicago, baby. Discover Chicago. Yeah. Uh, we can, we could, the, the working title right now is, um, last stop on Lincoln, but I kind of hate it. I don't know what you guys actually think. Or, um, yeah, I don't know. But or, or I don't discover love it. Chicago. Discover or, Chicago. That's a classic to Paul, though. Yeah, I was going to say, that's what took me to Pilsen. Talking to the mic, so. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, that's what uh, brought me to Pilsen for the first time. And yeah. Yeah. It brought you to Pilsen. It brought me to Pilsen, too, I believe. But that doesn't mean that we can't use it for our show. No. Uh, yeah, f fair, I guess. I don't know. We'd probably have to look into it a little bit. Yeah. I like the um, name. I just, you know, I don't know. I think it'd I don't be know cool if, if it was like has a word. it copyrighted. Do they have it copyrighted? Uh, they might. I don't know. Yeah, I have no so idea. So that's a post question, shall yeah. Definitely, we'll yeah. we'll get that one nailed down. Uh, but yeah, we are working title for a name, so I I think we're gonna call it Last Stop on Lincoln to start. But like I said, I hate it. Um, Sully, what's going on? What are you What are you thinking about? Getting the mix here a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm just. <laughs> Jack's just sitting over here, uh, you know. Is Jack staring you down no, a, little no, a little bit. Yeah. We're, we're getting excited to discover uh, Chicago. Yeah, all. no, that's so true. I can't wait to discover more of Chicago through our Discover Chicago. So today we're discovering the founding of Chicago, correct? Yeah, yeah, the founding of Chicago is the, the topic of the day. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, the, the idea behind the show is like we'll, we'll talk about you know, our, our, our lives are, you know, outside of podcasting lives, like the city, our lives in the city, um, you know, what we see, what we know about, what we read, what we watch. Um, so, and then, uh, yeah, we'll dive into a different, different topic every week. Um, but yeah, we just, we wanted to get something out there that was like a different, uh, thing that was more maybe broad and appealing to, people instead of maybe like some of the hockey content that we do uh jack show is really good let's cool one if you uh like jazz music or just like music in general um you know it, it's a cool show and uh you know we're trying to do more things like that um like this so um uh, yeah i don't know fellas yeah what do you want to get into what do you want to get into? You want to get into the marathon first? I have Sully's list in front of me. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we can. So tell um, us tell us what you know about the marathon today, Sully. You know, it, it happened over the weekend, um, 
early morning Sunday. Uh, it started in Grant Park. And like, you know, like all marathons, 26.2 miles. Um, you know, I, according to this website that, you know, I was reading about it. And uh, this website said, you know, it had a record uh, number of people entering at 50,000 plus all raising money for different charities. Um, and it also talked about that that wasn't the only record being broken. Um, you know, during the race, the women's world record was also broken. Um, and the winner ends up being a three-time Chicago Marathon winner. Names? Do we got names? Yeah, she was... Uh, I apologize if I butcher this, but it's Ruth Chepnagitic. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, she's from Kenya. Spell it. C H E P N G E T I C H. Okay. Um, you it was know. a good try. It yeah. Good I, try. Again, I apologize if I completely butchered that um, pronunciation. She won it though. Yeah. Um, she ran it. You know, she won it back to back in 2021 and 22, but she came second last year to Sifan Hassan of the Netherlands. You know. Do, um, don't they have, like, a pro run, and then they have, like, everybody else run, though? Yeah? Yeah, I think they they start them just, like, half an hour early. You know, I think the normal run, I want to say, starts at, like, se- 7.30, just because by then, you know, they start at 7, and by 7.30, they're already, whatever, almost a quarter of the way done by their numbers. Um. Yeah, so they start early. Yeah, so they do. Yeah, they do. They do start early. Yeah, Chicago Marathon's huge. You know, people from all over the world come in and do that. But how about uh, how about the the Bears today? You Win, wanna, winning you, the London game? You want to you want to jump into the Bears? I love the Bears. Are we gonna jump into the? The uh, history of Chicago. Are we gonna wait and well, wait on that for yeah, a second? Yeah, yeah. So like, we, we had some other stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. We had some other no, stuff. Yeah, there's just like stuff going around. There's stuff, going on yeah. around Chicago. Current you events. know this. Yeah, last events. weekend. You know, there's also those Northern Lights. I don't know if any of you guys did. Saw you those. check out the Northern Lights, Jack? I didn't get a chance to check out no, the Northern it's, Lights. It's pretty sick. I don't know if you've seen any of the. That was something I didn't like, know pictures. about until after it happened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it was. It was the l- lesser of the two. So there's one earlier in the year. I want to say like late May, early June ish. So this I'm- is going to prove how little I know about this kind of stuff, but like that doesn't happen very often. No, at least not in Chicago. No, no. you very rarely ever see something like that so far south. Usually you only see it like within near the poles slash, you know, upper parts of Canada. Slash, they I believe, I want to say those are actually they they only appear in the north, but don't quote me on that. They might appear in the south, um, just over both poles usually. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to. What was what nights were they? Was it Friday and Saturday? Uh, I believe it was Thursday, Friday. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Thursday, Friday. But although, like you know, I think I tried to go out and look. I want to say maybe Thursday night when I got home, and I could not see it a whole lot. And maybe that was just, you know, kind of like light pollution slash Chicago. You had to be down by the beach, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, where you didn't get interrupted by a bunch of skyscrapers and other stuff. Yeah. There you go. You could see it all, like, in a lot of different parts of the state, though. Yeah, that's what that's what we were we were looking at when we wanted to double check with some of it. Um, yeah, I don't know where where what uh, county was that? Tosses, do you remember? Uh, no, I don't no. remember. I don't remember. Uh, but it, yeah. It oh, cool McHenry though. County. Here it is. Shows skies lit up with greens and reds. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well. If you didn't get a chance to catch it, their pictures, check it out. I think it's fantastic. I saw the earlier one um, up by my house in Wisconsin. It was great. So when's the next time we'll get something like that? Um, yeah, because, like I said, I really didn't feel like I knew about it until after the fact. 
Um, Nobody was like, hey, this is coming tonight. Be on the lookout. Yeah, of course. I'm only getting... When... Jack, are we holding you in from talking about the Bears right now? No, 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 no. Well, 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 yeah, I mean, we could I'm, let you rip um, on the Bears. What, what's what? No, it's okay. I don't really today. have much to say. They, um, they won today. Yeah, uh, they they did win today. They looked great in the London game. Um, Caleb Williams threw for four touchdowns, which was which was sick to see. Um, you know, I uh, I, I watched like probably like half the game. Second half, but they're already winning for a while. So, yeah, they pretty much just uh, torched the Jags in London, and we love to see it. Yeah, Caleb's getting better. Yeah, he looked really good today. He yeah, really he, good. he does. Speaking as a Packers fan, he looks a whole lot better than he did in whatever, either the first two yeah. or first three weeks. You know, he, he definitely seems to have found his groove a little bit better. They're going into the bye week now, so they have a little time to, like, regroup, work on some things. But Keenan Allen got involved today, which was sick. He got he caught two tutties, uh, which he was he came over the Bears from the, the Chargers this year, but he looked great. Cole Komet had the Cole other two, Komet right? had two tutties, yeah, and that was great for him. Um... Yeah, yeah, Caleb just looked really good. The offensive line looked a lot better today. He threw that one interception, but um, I only saw that on the highlights. I didn't see any of the game in the game, but it's uh, apparently he was yeah hard worker man. He uh, he looked great. Good game. Love to see a win in London. You know. No, definitely. The Hotspur Stadium. I want to say it was not arena. It's stadium. I think in London. Great place to uh, get a dub outside of the U.S. Great environment. I, sure, I, I've watched I, a couple soccer games. You know, yeah, yeah, I think so. It would be. It's kind of like you know, you think the the people in London would probably just have a, jerseys of like a bunch of different teams and stuff, just like a bunch of NFL fans. But no, there was quite a few Bears fans there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I just think you know we're we're also from Chicago. You know, the third, give or take, biggest place. In, in the country, you know, you're just bound to have people leave and still honor yeah. that part of them, you know? Being a Bears fan. Yeah, it's, sure. it's tough to honor them at some points like that. No offense. <laughs> I, you know, speaking as a Packers fan, once again, you know, we haven't missed the playoffs in a while. Just saying, just saying. Don't quote me on that. Actually, I think we missed last year, but yeah. Um, we'll, I, all I can say is we'll see what happens, man. I don't know. You know, fair enough. They play. Uh, what uh, week do they play again? I think it's like it's late. It's later, but yeah, the Bears haven't beat the Packers in a long time. Yeah, I think I uh, saw something after they played the last time last year. I want to say that the Packers are finally like up, like plus five hundred in the all time series. Meaning, like you know, they've won more than they've lost against the they Bears. They have. They have. Yeah. That's incredible. Just, you yeah. know, after 20, what, 20 ish years of dominance by the Bears, you know, in like the 80s. And yeah, yeah. What else, Sally? What else is on your list? Actually, can I ask you something? Can I ask you something first? I want to, this is a question for Jack. Um, as somebody who's from Chicago land area, Chicago, um, how long before. Because Sully was like, oh, we're from Chicago, but Sully's from Wisconsin. I'm from Florida. Um, also, why we're having our fellow uh, Alithio podcasters on uh, this show uh, from time to time because we're doing a History of Chicago podcast, and neither of us are from here, but we both uh, feel like, you know, we've, we've been here long enough that um, we could do this show and that we're i don't know like can we do you think we could say we're from chicago after i've been living here seven years dude um i don't know yeah i mean if if you're ultimately from florida you know i mean well yeah yeah no i know i and i tell people i'm from florida i'm proud of it but like also like i'm i'm also like from chicago now at this point you know i've been living here so long yeah yeah you lived here for a long time i mean you know it's kind of just up to you. I mean, if you feel like you're you're you really know the people here and like the type of lifestyle, 
Just you're really well acquainted with really well acquainted with Chicago. I don't know, but um, being from somewhere is just kind of a different thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know. People also here be saying that they're from Chicago when they are from very far away. Yeah, I mean, so I will say like I'm from the Chicago area. You know, because like St. Charles isn't really Chicago. It's kind of like a suburb, definitely a suburb. But it's it's still pretty close to the Chicago area. And, you know, started coming into the city at a young age and stuff like that. But definitely around this area, it's like the Chicago land area. It's very nice, though, too, St. Charles. Yeah, it's a very nice town. Yeah, it's a, it's a cute town, very small, but it's very chill. Um, yeah, very proud to be from there too, because it's a very great community. You know, a lot of history out in St. Charles as well. So you get what I'm saying, though, right? Like, you know, being like, because you're not yeah, from here, but you've yeah, been here a while yeah, now. I've been here, what, uh, six years? Five, so five six years, something years. like that, whatever. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely feel that sometimes, especially like when I'm talking. Like, I don't feel it here, obviously, because it's, you know, but when I say things like, oh, I got to go home to my parents while I'm in Wisconsin, you know, it's like it, it's a constant like reminder of like, oh, wow, that was just, uh, you know, subconsciously, this is no longer my home. You know, I don't know. I totally get what you're saying, though. Yeah, like I don't go back to Florida very often. I don't know. Yeah, I mean it's a lot easier for me to get up to Wisconsin from here than for you to get to Florida, but yeah. Uh what else you got on your list? Yeah, the last thing that I uh was looking at, you know, obviously with all the uh stuff going on down in the south and in the bay and through Florida, um I caught a little bit of this talking about how like you know firefighters red cross volunteers uh they're all kind of going down to florida to uh help out with the rebuilding from uh hurricane milton i think it is right that's the one that went through yeah Wasn't hurricane the one milton that went through texas too uh, that a different one a it different went one? the milton went through the tampa bay area okay but there wasn't one that hit Texas this time either. I I don't I don't don't okay. think so. Okay. No, I think it just hit Tampa Bay. Okay. Well, yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was Hurricane Milton. The other one is Hurricane Helene that went through. Uh, That's the one I was thinking. Of. Like that was, uh, that was like East the Tennessee. East Coast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really bad. Really. It hit. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. And like North Carolina and right yeah. in that ish area. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that uh, I was thinking of. I don't know where. There's also came Tropical from. Storm Leslie too, but I guess that's dying down a little bit. Okay. Hurricane Milton, though. It was like Milton and Helene were the two ones that really uh, were really destructive. There was some. There was some damage to North Florida and the Carolinas, and you know, it was yeah. There was a good. lot of damage. I mean, yeah, that's uh, definitely yeah. So what a shame. Uh, but people from Chicago are going down there. Yeah. Yeah. Like firefighters, um, you know, volunteers for, with the uh, American Red Cross. Um, and, you know, this one I'm just reading here right now, you know, it talks about how they're kind of deploying and, um, you know, some of them are first time volunteers. Um, yeah. All right. Well, what else? Anything? Marathon cleanup? Did you have anything else from the marathon? Uh, no, I did not really. Um, I mean, I, yeah, if you want to talk about the other champions, um, you know, from the men's wheelchair, uh, it was Marcel Hug of Switzerland, um, you know, winning his third straight, um, finishing later than his record, um, you know, like three minutes later, his record being a, an hour, 22, uh, 37. And he finished this year at 125.54. Uh, the women's wheelchair champion, Catherine DeBrunner. Um, yeah, the men's regular champion, John Corrier, 
uh, also from Kenya. So the men's and women's champions were both from Kenya this year, which was that's cool. Pretty great to see. Um, yeah, and then actually I didn't notice this, um, but they actually have a. Why am I not seeing it now? A uh, a non-binary race, and David Ike finished two thirty four oh one. Um, yeah, it was it was weird to see. You know, they had a hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, one point seven million spectators. You know, just lining the room. Apparently, according to this, that it brought a forty two percent economic boost to the city compared to last year's, which is kind of interesting to see. Interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to see if uh, somebody from Chicago has ever won the Chicago Marathon, but I couldn't find anything. I'm sure there has been, but uh, I can't find anything. Hmm. Do you think you guys could run a marathon? Jack, you run a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haven't you run like a half marathon? I ran a half marathon. I just left. Um, yeah, a while ago, probably like five years ago now, but like, uh, yeah, I, I did run a half marathon. Um, I can't believe that I did it. And uh, it's really, really a lot of running and a lot of work. I can't believe that people double that shit and go 24 uh, or 26.2. Yeah, 26. Oh, yeah. No. To do the marathon. That's a lot. It's a really long way to go. You know, you really got to train for that shit. I mean, you know, if I really, really train and like set my mind to it, I believe I could do anything. But, you know, um, you know, like those people just have unbelievable runners high, you know, and they're just like addicted to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Like, yeah. They're addicted to running that shit, you know? For them, like, to you run. know, 20 miles in, and they're still like, oh, my God, I love this. You know, I, yeah, you know, I feel, love how they feel, yeah. they feel broke, you know. They're just like, I fucking love this shit, dude. I like, you know, I just can't, I just want to run. I'm a runner. You know, some, some people are just runners, and that's cool. Yeah. You know, some people love to run. Some people are really good at running long distances really quickly. But isn't, like, the original story of the marathon, like, uh. Some dude like w- was like delivering a message of war to another city, and yeah. he just like ran really quickly yeah. and died. Yeah, he ran from yeah, yeah. the uh, bay. I don't know the beach of Marathon to Athens. No, I mean I, he ran to the next messenger who was twenty six point two miles away, and then instantly died. Yeah, 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 and then they still all got there in time and won the battle. Basically, is the story. Yeah, 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 definitely. He told his um, message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Um, but yeah, this this show is about the history of Chicago. So those are some current events. You know, should we should we get into the history now a little bit? All right. So history of Chicago. Uh, the History of Chicago. So you got the you got the first little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. So prior to any European involvement, so we're talking pre-settlement. You know, um, you know, prior to that European exploration, um, several groups were inhabiting the area that we call Chicago. Uh, the main tribes being, you know, the Potawatomi, Miami, the uh, Illinois Confederation, um, the Fox and the Sock. Um, what's the fox and the sock? Uh, those are two tribes. F- fox, or I guess they call it the Meskwaki. Sorry if I again butchered that. I apologize. Uh, but they're two <laughs> the different walkie? tribes. Yeah. The fox. Yeah. Uh, Meskwaki? No, they're called the Meskwaki. M E S K W A K I. I'm assuming oh. is the. That was like a tribe that was it, here. Is the trend is the is how they oh. would say it. Okay. Yeah. And then the, the that sock. Right. What's up? That looks right. That yeah. Sounds right. That's um, yeah. Those are the tribes that lived to the west of Chicago, um, interacting with the region, especially through th- trade. Um, you know, the Potawatomi, the big group in the Chicago region at the time, um, part of the Council of Three Fires, an alliance with the 
Ottawa and Ojibwe tribes. Um, eventually, they moved out. At, I'm sorry, they moved in after displacing the earlier Miami to Illinois Confederation tribes. Uh, Miami tribe was one of the first groups to inhabit the area, um, pushed further east by other Native Americans. Same with the Illinois Confederation. Um, yeah, uh, long before it became a hub for Europeans, it was a uh, recognized for a strategic location by Native Americans. Um, you know, been established as a critical part of their extensive trading no- networks. Yeah, with it being right on the lake, right? Yeah, must be. Yeah, right on Lake Michigan, and it it connected to all those rivers that were in the Mississippi like river system. Right. You know, so yeah. it. Uh, Definitely opened the trade from basically the entire. Yeah, you you could, you know, you're right in the middle of the United States. You could do a nice big railroad, also the the lakes, you know, and then the rivers going all the way down south to New Orleans, all the way out east to New York, you know. It's like, yeah, exactly. Out into Canada and out, really. Like yeah, it goes just, all like the a, just like a prime spot for trade. You within the middle of central United States. Yeah. You could see how it's would be sought after land. Yeah. Yeah. So um, all those tribes were living there? Yeah, and they were, you know, somewhat you know, there was definitely fighting between them, but it was definitely lesser fighting than what the European powers brought onto them. You oh. know. The Europeans? Yeah. You know. Um, they came in and killed? Well, okay, so, you know, first, you know, it started, they were just trading with each other, slash expanding and, you know, into each other a little bit, yes. But that was partially due to the, you know, the fur trade. You know, the Iroquois attacked because they wanted to monopolize the fur trade with to Europe. You know. Uh the fur trade. Yeah. So the the Europeans were f- selling fur to the natives? No, the natives were selling furs to the Europeans. Oh. Yeah. And you know, they had mainly French at the time explorers in the area. Um you know, bringing new goods, technology, um, but also very important was the diseases they were bringing, you know. In 1673, you had the French explorers, Father Jacques Marquette and Louis Joyer, uh, who came on an expedition to explore the Western territories of New France, which was uh, modern-day Canada and the U.S. Midwest, and they were um, trying to make a map and explore potential trade routes in uh, the region and discover whether the Mississippi River could be a direct route to the Pacific Ocean, which obviously it was not. Um, Yeah, they encountered a a portage between the Chicago River and the Des Plaines River. Uh, Joliet, a fur trader, immediately recognized the significance of the area as a natural link between two important water routes. This is kind of interesting. Um, Definitely. Yeah, it was like what we were saying, like a link from all the way to the Mississippi, all the way out east to the the New York. St. Lawrence River, I think it is, right? Between Canada and New York and, Mar- you know, up through the... I'm not sure what that's called. But yeah, they didn't... Um, still after that, like nobody really went back there until Du Sable did in the late 1770s. So it was like almost another hundred years before people really decided to to settle there again. Mm -hmm. Um, I was actually, you know, doing a little research trying to figure out where the name Chicago came from. Um, And, you know, the first reference of the site of the current city uh, was as Chicago spelled C-H-E-C-A-G-O-U by Robert de la Salle in around 1679 in a memoir. Um, Henri Jutel uh, in his journal of 1688 noted that the wild garlic called 
Chikagoa grew abundantly in the area. Uh, according to his diary in late September of 1687, quote, when we arrived at the said place called Chicago, which according to what we were able to learn of it, has taken his name because of the quantity of garlic which grows in the forest in this region. I just, I don't know. I thought that was a little yeah, interesting. Yeah, Chicago's named after garlic. Yeah, wild garlic. It's pretty That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had Dusable come in in the 70s. Um, He was from Haiti, Dominican Republic, Haiti. What was it called at the time, Sully? Uh, I believe it was called Hispaniola. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, African... And Afro or African and or Afro Caribbean mother, French father, uh, traveled to North America and established a trading post along the Chicago River near Lake Michigan. What do you guys? What do you guys got on yeah. Dusabel? Anything? No? Uh, I mean, not really on him. Um, I kind of have a little bit on sort of why. You know, um, tribes viewed Europeans as, you know, not Bad. the greatest. Yeah. Well, because they were, but. Yeah, you know. yeah. But it was also because of several conflicts, you know. All right. Were, what do you got? Um, you know, I guess it would start with, from my research, it definitely started with the French and Indian War, you know, pitting the French. So the, the dates are 1754 to 1763. Yeah. Um, you know, p- pitting the French and their uh, Native American allies against the British. Uh, The British ended up winning in the Treaty of Paris in 1763, um, you know, shifting the influences from French to British. But, you know, um, another big one was Pontiac's Rebellion, which happened right after the British uh, took control. Uh, uh, Ottawa leader Pontiac... um, organized a resistance movement um, by native tribes against the military presence and policies in the region. You know, Chicago wasn't really directly involved, but I think the broader conflicts affected the area and it also influenced how tribes viewed Europeans and settlers going forward. And then obviously the British then give control over to the U S in Treaty of Paris, eight, uh, 1783. 20 years after gaining it, they lose it to the U.S. After we kicked their butts, told them to get the hell out. Sorry for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, you talked about Joliet and Marquette, right? Yeah, a little bit. A okay. little bit. I don't even yeah, there's a, there's a uh, J- uh, Baptiste or Dusable Museum. He was born in 1745. It's crazy, Dusable. There's a street too. Yeah, there's a street, Dusable. He was, um, yeah, just recognized as Chicago's founder. He's the founder guy. He was born in Haiti, Saint Mark, Haiti. Died seven and when he was 73 years old, and uh, yeah. They call him Chicago's first permanent non-indigenous resident. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. According to this, he, he had a farm, a trading post, a blacksmith shop, and a smokehouse. Wow. Ooh. He's doing it all. Yeah. Well positioned along the, the crucial fur trading routes. Um, definitely r- got him a step into that figure within the uh, early economy of the region, I think. Um. You know, it says he traded with everyone, you know, Native American tribes, French settlers, British traders. Wow. Yeah. So um, what role did he play exactly in the founding of Chicago? Like, obviously, he was the first guy here. But do we know? And then this this thing I was reading, like, put Fort Dearborn with him, although it seems like these are two totally different things. Yeah, well, it, it so Fort Dearborn kind of came in to sort of become a a, a spot where they could a ama- you know it became a fort where the you can look over everything and make sure nothing's going on, on and you know it it became the defense of the region 
essentially. It was the U.S. Army's westernmost outpost yeah. in the early 19th century and marked the first major investment on new federal land in this region. Mm-hmm. Around the fort, there were a few homes. This is from Chicago Architecture Center, architecture.org. Uh, around the fort, there were a few homes and John Kinsey's fur trading post. The settlement. Yeah, I was going to say that John, so yeah. his settlement he bought from John Baptiste. Oh yeah, so I guess like he came and then yeah this fort so was yeah built, fort Dusable Dearborn was built, built like the foundation yeah. you know Kinsey took it and ran with it if that makes sense yeah do we know like what parts of Chicago this this would be like downtown now that it is not today um where's Fort Dearborn at uh, well it's hasn't been in use well, yeah since, no you know. no I wonder if there's like a uh, at least a plaque or something um, you'd have to imagine. Maybe probably on the south side, I would say. Yeah. Uh, wow. It's actually right. Oh, right by the river? Yeah. Right by the river on... What is this? DuSable Drive? No. I mean, hmm. Michigan and Wacker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Down. So, like, right almost just inside of the... Um, the delta of the river, I guess, would be the scientifically correct way to say that. Uh, the uh, that was kind of um, Chicago's, or that that was kind of like the first sign that Fort really and Dusable was kind of like the first wave of European and European Americans into Chicago in this this area. So it's kind of wild. Yeah. Yeah. It was burned guy. down too as part of the War of 1812. He's from Haiti, but he had like a French name. Maybe he had French parents. Yeah, his, his dad, his was, dad French. was French. Dad was French. Uh, yeah. Must have been a cool guy if he was trading with everyone, had a bunch of stuff, you know? Exactly. Must have been like the chillest settle- founder ever. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. People, yeah, I mean, they, there's museums named after him. and Yeah, he must have been an awesome dude because everyone wanted to live by him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Everybody wanted to live by him, yeah. True. True. Fort Dearborn <laughs> came down in 1857, and it is now the Loop yeah. and Lake, Lakefront Park, or Grant Park, also known as. So, yeah, that's cool. And it's one of the four red stars on the Chicago flag, Fort Dearborn. Mm. What are the other three? Do you know? I don't. Thanks for putting me on the spot I'm there, sorry. though, dude. Really appreciate that. Oh, do you know Jack? Um, the Great Chicago Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The World's Columbian Exposition. Yeah, there you go. And the Century of Progress Exposition. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Sully, dude, you're being quite the historian tonight, man. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, just mixing it up a little bit on this show. No, I love it. I love it. This is cool shit. You know, DeSable must have been a great guy. Um, the Chicago flag is sick. It is and, a cool uh, flag. Yeah, it's really cool. They they have. Uh, have you seen like the uh, like the the couple sports teams incorporated them in their jerseys too? Like the the Cubs, I think, have a jersey with like the Chicago flag in it. Side note, anyway. No, yeah. Yeah, which is like... I did not know that, but that's sick. Yeah, yeah. It's like the... It's kind of like the light blue and the red stars. It's a a classic flag, you know? I like the Chicago flag. It's a really, really nice flag. Do you, Sully? Yeah, no, I I, I do. Would you get a shirt of the Chicago flag? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I would. Would you get a tattoo of the Chicago flag? Uh, That's a question for both of you. Probably not. No, me neither. No, I don't think so, man. Unless I could do, like, my entire face. You know, that's Your entire face? Yeah, no. I'm just kidding. I would not. Also, whichever one of you is playing with the mic, please cease. Um, Not me. No, it wasn't me, I don't think. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> I mean, it was the mic ghost. <laughs> yeah, the mic ghost. Uh, it was the mic ghost. All right, so Dusable, he moves here, Fort Dearborn, 
And then um, in 1831, well, hold on. Yeah, you, you have the them creating Cook County. You also had them, you also had the United States bringing Illinois in as a state in, oh gosh, I have it right here. Uh, 1818, December 3rd, 1818, Illinois becomes the 21st state in the union. Yeah. Hell uh, yeah. Yeah. Woo. So that was a good, like, 30, 40 years after the Sable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 18 might as well be 20. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 18 might as well be 20. Yeah. Yeah, like, nine, uh, 18, yeah, 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might as well be 18, When was 20. the Sable? Uh, I think he sold it to Lindsay in 1800, I want to say. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah. he was there way before. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, so he was out of there. What what did, what did other states came in around that time? I'm not sure. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, well, this is... List of U.S. states by date of admission to the Union. There you go. Do you guys know what the first state was? Uh, I'm going to guess it was I have it right either here. New York, Philadelphia... Uh, yeah, F- Massachusetts? Oh, my God, I said nope. Philadelphia. I meant... Uh, Massachusetts was six. Uh, Pennsylvania. Delaware? Delaware. Delaware. Really? Yeah. December 7th, 1787. Wow. Five days later was followed by Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. So I was close. I was five days off. I knew it had to be six. Pennsylvania had to be close because that was where the Constitution was written. So Illinois is 21. Uh, just before them, about a year little under Mississippi, December 10th, 1817. So a year before. And then a year before that is Indiana. A year before that is in. Yeah. Okay. So that's a year after Illinois is Alabama. Yeah. And then Illinois was the state before Alabama. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. I've I've never looked at it like that, but. Do do you guys know the most recent states? (sighs) Hawaii and Alaska. yeah. 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 Well, U.S. is a lot of uh, territory, though, outside of those states. Yeah, it does. Not on the list that I'm looking at. Currently. Yeah, neither <laughs> neither is it on mine. Uh, That's cool, though. Illinois. So Chicago, yeah, you, DuSable really, really founded it. And then uh, 20 years, 40 years later, no, 40 years later, it became a state. Sold it to who did he sell it to again? John Kinsey. John Kinsey. I believe that's a Kinsey is a avenue. Yeah, it's big, probably another street. street. It's yeah. a big street. Yeah. Yeah, and then August of eighteen thirty three, the town of Chicago is incorporated. The population totals no more than two hundred people. Um, you had the eighteen thirty three Treaty of Chicago. Well, there was there was another treaty of there was an eighteen twenty one treaty of Chicago, signed by uh, Lewis Cass and Solomon Sibley. Um, it was he was Michigan territorial governor Lewis Cass? Um, yeah. The treaty ceded to the United States all lands in Michigan territory south of the Grand River, with the exception of several small reservations. Also ceded by the Native Americans was a tract of land. An easement between Detroit and Chicago through Indiana and Illinois around the southern coast of Lake Michigan and specific Native Americans were also granted property rights to define parcels. Hmm. Yeah. And then there was the 1833 treaty uh, was an agreement between the U.S. government, the Chippewa, Adawa and Potawatomi or Potawatomi tribes. Potawatomi? Potawatomi. Yeah. The uh, required the dude. I love the Potawatomi tribe. 
The Potawatomi? Yeah, they had a park. The Potawatomi Park was in my hometown, St. Charles. Nice park? Yeah, it's a great park. They'd have all, I would go to that park a lot, and it would always be really sick. I'd be like, let's, let's go, Potawatomi Park. So I love the Potawatomi tribe. Yeah, well, them, the Chippewa and the Adawa, uh, ceded to the U.S. government 5 million acres of land uh, in Illinois, the Wisconsin Territory, and the Michigan Territory, and to move west of the Mississippi River. Potawatomi. Interesting. So I think Chicago was involved in all of that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It had been there for a while, but, you know, that was its formal inclusion into the United States. Yeah, and then I uh, obviously it got parceled up into states and, yeah, that became Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, yeah. So wait, so then shouldn't shouldn't Michigan and when did Michigan get brought in as a state? I know we just did this, but Michigan was should be around the same time then. Twenty six. Okay. It was almost nineteen years after. Illinois was brought in as a state, so I don't know what that's about. But um, yeah, All well, right. Illinois, Illinois had Chicago. Yeah, but Chicago wasn't Chicago until 1833. Wait, why was that? I thought Chicago was Chicago before. It was a trading post, but it, it that was when it became officially in, integrated. I don't know. Is it, there's probably a better word? Ingratiate. No, no, like it became part of the United States and completed all the necessary steps for becoming yeah. a city and state. Yeah, it became incorporated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it didn't have even 200 people. Which at is the just time. a fancy word for saying belonging to. In 1830, you started to get like a lot of people started moving here. Yeah. Yeah. I guess after the fact, too, you know. That's more. To, that's more episodes for us. We can't. We can't do the whole history of. This is the. Yeah. The founding. We, we don't of. got a week of just sitting here talking about it straight. You know. Yeah. Got to parcel it up just like they did with the land. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But the Potawatomi tribe was here first, and then you guys kicked them out. You guys. We didn't kick Whoa. them out. Whoa. Yeah. You what do you mean, you guys, bro? <laughs> I'm not even from here, bro. What's your excuse? I don't know, man. But like the the Europeans kicked them out. Basically, yeah. Oh, well. Um, That's a lot of U.S. history, though. Yeah. And you, can, and Canadian history too. So, but like basically, the moral of the story is give it up for our guy Sabel for being the OG founder. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and then eventually he sold it and probably like lived out his days pretty happily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I and pe- like I said, people still revere him here. So, so I don't think he was cut from the same cloth as a lot of people when it came to, you know, eventually driving out. Yeah, yeah. And, I think he yeah. he was very open and willing to trade with whoever for whatever. You know, it wasn't like he was here setting the stepping stones for the army to come in, you know. Yeah. I don't know. So 1833, it had less than 200 people, but by 1837, there were 4,000 people here. Just about. That's pretty crazy. 20 times over in four years. And yeah. today we're at what? 2.7-ish mil? Uh, yeah. Give or take. Yeah, 2.7. Have you guys been to the Du Sable Museum? I have not, honestly. I, I'm 
Where is it? Well, what type of museum is it? Just about to Savile? Yeah, but there's like all kinds of different Chicago history and uh yeah, it really cool stuff. I went uh in college with a class of mine in the later year. It's uh, good. Okay, it, okay. It's by it the I don't remember a lot of it. It's kind of but. close to the Museum of Science and Industry, right? Like in Hyde Park area? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I actually think I have been there. Is it in, like, the University of Chicago campus? Basically, yeah. Yes. And I have. Yeah, it's a cool spot. Anybody there, anybody around, go check it out. Or if you're visiting Chicago. Chicago's 187 years old. Hell yeah. That's or, pretty radical. And older, depending on how you're counting. Well, yeah. We're counting from March 4th, 1873. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. 1837, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Interesting. All right, well, anything else you fellas got on the founding of Chicago? Not really? Not really, I think that. Um, oh. No, the... Um, I think Jack's our microphone culprit. No. No? No, you're lucky it's the been, camera cut out. Otherwise, you'd be exposed right now. And it's Sully's, been Sully the whole time, dude. It has it been Sully? Oh no, it hasn't. Yeah, he's been kind of goofing over here and oh, moving his feet and shit. All right, fellas, what else we got? Nothing. Um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to talk. Um, city's first mayor, William B. Ogden, from New York. Um. Influential figure in the uh, early development of the city. Uh, advocated for, uh, you know, improved infrastructure and kind of laying the groundwork for Chicago's future growth. Um, you know, they be- under his leadership, the city began, you know, modernizing its streets, uh, constructing its first bridges and improving its harbor to handle the growing volume of trade. What's so funny over there, guys? He just... <laughs> Put his foot on mine. <laughs> no, no. And it was no. like stroking it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Y'all dude. Are weird. What don't y'all don't add me into this, y'all. But other than that, no, I don't uh I don't would you like me to read that again so they can No, no, no. no. You don't need to read it again. But um what do you so so he was named mayor like right when they they named the town? Um I don't have dates. Let me. Yeah. I yeah, know. I guess it it does say he was elected May second of that year of eighteen thirty seven. Yeah. Yeah. So a few days before. No, a, a, a month. A few day- oh, okay. Almost two months after. Oh, all right. But yeah, that's a. Oh, he actually. Beat John Kinsey. Oh, really? Yeah. Who's this guy? Ogden. So I'm oh. assuming I'm assuming that's it. That's the the son of the original John Kinsey because he got to if the original got to the Chicago in the 1790s. I'm not sure how. You don't think he capable, made it to 1837? I don't think so. <laughs> I think it was his son. It might have been. Should we know more about this if we're doing this podcast? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I wish we were on camera right now so people could see our faces. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> mm. All right. Uh, is that it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's the that's the founding of Chicago. There you go, everybody. Um so, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this show. Name still pending. What, what do we got? Thought? Anybody have thoughts on the name? I really like Discover Chicago. We can't rip off the school. You mean As, DePaul? Just, you know? This fool. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the real fool for paying, giving them so much money? Huh? Yeah, I went there. Yeah, we all went there. 
It's like calling Someone a stole, p- stole there. But it's also like calling a podcast like oh like English class one oh one, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you called it that, it wouldn't rip off to Paul because they have like a class called that. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I guess. Or like like saying jazz improvisation is like a class at DePaul. You know, discover Chicago is literally a class at DePaul, but it's also just two words. Just two words. You know. Yeah, yeah. I also think we could get more like hip with the name. Yeah. I don't know. I think we've spent plenty of time. What were some of our... Do you remember any of our... Gym Shoes. Gym Shoes. What do you think of that podcast name, Jack? No? No. No thoughts? Uh, For what? Well, just because it's like a... It's a saying that... Started in Chicago. Yeah, it was a very Midwestern way of saying sneakers. You know? Gym Shoes. Gym Shoes. No? Even though, no. Okay. Okay. That means no. All right. He, I've he never also, really, yeah. He I mean, heard. I've heard that. That's what my people would say, but. That's what they're called. Like gym shoes. Yeah. They're like running shoes. Yeah. Gym shoes. Yeah. That's what I've always called them. Like, I, I always thought it was weird to just say sneakers. Sneakers. Like, what are you? You're not sneaking in them. Why are they called sneakers? You know? Sneakers is what it feels like you call them for, like a child. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Right. Yeah. Well, no. Put on like, your like, like the the Jordans are sneakers. True. Technically. Yeah, I guess. Fair. All right. So so not no no gym shoes name for the podcast. What was the other name? Oh, Jack hadn't heard the. Ed Sully, had you heard the phrase "yuck it up" before? No. You hadn't? I mean, like, I, I mean, we used to say, like, yuck to talk about die. Like something that's gross. Or that, but, you know, like, yuck die, you know? Um, yeah, but, like, yuck it up, funny guy, nobody ever... No. Really? Never, no. Yuck it up. Yeah, that's definitely a phrase that people say. I don't know. Uh, what else? Anything else, fellas? Uh, no, just I hope everyone has a good day. Yeah, this uh, we'll plug our other shows right now. Just use this as a quick ad here at the end. Uh, everybody, go listen to bet. You can find Sully at Betting the House. Uh, you can find Jack on Let's Cool There's One. You can find me on Chicago Hockey Radio and Good Morning Hockey. And yeah, I think that's it. We'll we'll be doing uh, this Forum show. Blues. Or yeah, Forum, Forum Blues. Yeah, Forum Blues. You know, but none of us are on that. Yeah, fair. Um. And then, yeah, that's that's what we got. So, um, everybody, go check that that stuff out and um, subscribe to the Alithio Network YouTube. This this show is going to be on uh, video as well. I know the video cut out, but, but well, well, the first half it, it cut out like just at the perfect time when we started transitioning to talk about the history of Chicago. So, uh, first half you'll get the video for for this, but the second half you will not. So. Uh, but next time that won't be a problem. Um, the cameras just died. So, um, that's it. Anything else, Sully? Any last words? No, that's all I've got. All uh, right. check out my betting the house this Tuesday. Come check me out today. You actually, win any of your bets. Uh, I won a couple, but I always recap at the beginning, and I don't want to double jinx or anything. Um, because not all of them are done. I've got one on Monday, so. Yeah, but if you guys like listening to bets, come check Betting the House out. I recap, I talk bets upcoming from Tuesday to Thursday, and then Thursday till the next Tuesday. Yeah, check me out. There you go. Quick self-promotion from Solly on his other own show now. Um, yeah, but yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. thanks to Jack too again last time. Uh, but yeah, no problem. Yeah, 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 we're gonna probably have you back on again when we do something music related. Uh, We'll we'll reach back out, but but yeah, cool. All right, that's it. Uh, we'll see everybody next week. Peace. Peace.